You know what I hate? I'll tell you. I hate people who take the joy out of everything. And experts are at the top of the list. You can say DNA methylation occurs in the mitochondria of cells. Take some joy in knowing that. I do. But if a scientist is in the room, a killjoy, they'll say, that isn't absolutely proven. And then I say, mounting evidence is proving that methylation occurs, and she, the scientist, will blow off the research by saying the evidence is putative. Can you believe that? Putative, which, by the way, is the best thing you can say to defeat your scientist enemy. Putative. Putative means it's supposedly true. Of course, if there was a vocabulary expert in the room, they'd kill scientists' joy in knowing the definition of putative by saying, not really. The definition is commonly accepted or supposed. But she's using the second definition, assumed to exist. Yikes! You just can't get a word in on a current hot topic, especially at my hot parties. You want to come? You could maybe methylate right in front of us. People do. They methylate all the time. You just can't see it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. With or without clothes on, you can methylate with your clothes off. I've never seen it because it happens at the cellular level, as we say in science, and currently we can't really see it, but someday we will. And you'll be able to see hot guys like me methylating clothes on or off. But at my parties, here's what I don't get. Why take the joy out of something that's been said? Do you feel the same way? If you feel? I don't. Feel, that is. Why take the joy out of something? I ask that all the time to religious people. Why take the joy out of God? You know, God has to have a sense of humor if he made humans. I know God could have stopped at monkeys because they can be funnier than humans, but only when they put human clothes on. By themselves, they just pick lice off each other. But God made them with fur. Of course, a single human can be funny. Just think about how a single human look at himself in the mirror. But not more than one human, which God found out about really fast when he made the second human, Eve. Not that Eve was any worse than Adam. In fact, God did a better job the second time around. Like any engineer can tell you, the beta just isn't as good as the product that goes out the door. I suspect God dances with joy every time someone is born. Every time someone does something good toward a neighbor. Every time someone has a leap of creativity. Every time someone uses the word putative. And I'm just a scientist looking in from the outside on this God thing. You religious people just don't continuously tell stories about how God transfers some kind of joy into your lives. 
Instead, you make God into a really difficult person, an angry person, and punish everyone in eternal fire, including you, if you don't do this or that or have enough faith, as though faith is something you can measure with a thermometer or a hydrometer if faith has moisture in it and you want to know the water level. I read the book Varieties of Religious Experience by William James because he took a scientific approach. Well, only if you believe that psychologists and philosophers are scientists, which some killjoy in the room will question. In the book by William James, one person who was overcome with the presence of God said, How can I express in poor and barren words sentiments which the heart alone understands? And that's exactly what I would say to the killjoys who suck the joy out of the air. How can I express in poor and barren words sentiments like I'm having a lot of fun spouting off, which the heart, and I think I have one, alone understands. So to make it really clear what this person says, it's about being overcome by the presence of God, which is called second birth in this book by William James. What is clear is that being overwhelmed by God's presence can't be expressed in words, like methylation. Why doesn't every person who's religious talk like that? Say the experience of feeling a connection to God is so profound and moving and so full of joy, it can't be expressed in words, and that only the heart understands. We've all been there. When I have an experiment work, after I raised the rat for more than a year and gave it and several others countless injections with something that makes it methylate, I feel something that is inexpressible. Like, darn, it was all worth it for that great experimental result. One year of toil, day and night, and it works. All that work, all that effort, I trudge on my grumpy way down the sidewalk, and all of a sudden, people look all right. Not like useless bags of skin, but like marvelous creations, no matter how dismal they appear. Even if the day is dark and rainy, Arnold Toadstoy doesn't care. It's just another day. But what a day. Now, multiply that by an experience from God to the nth power, and you have a religious experience that no one can take away from you, because it's in your heart. And no matter how bleak your life on earth, you know that one experience with God transcends all else. Why don't you religious people talk like that? Instead, it's arguments among yourselves about which way you're supposed to worship and view politics, or with those outside your circle about the right way to believe or behave. If I were religious and not one who methylates over religious myths, I'd speak to joy daily, like I do with my joy of knowing everything. If you religious just once said to one another, you will not be able to express in poor and barren words a sentiment so large and so overwhelming, what you will discover if only you opened your heart to God, then you will have this overwhelming larger-than-life experience if if only you were open to it, if only you made yourself available. Then, then you can come to my parties and hear killjoys who will take the life out of thin air. Call your belief putative. Bring up how 
all your fellow believers don't see the joy in God at all, how they methylate God into a spiteful warlord, how they don't see God dancing for joy. Well, that sobered me up. I guess I'll throw another gathering and methylate among experts who take the life out of everything.